you've ever thought about tilting your panels on your solar system to try to increase your output, that's what we're going to cover today on Racing to the Green Channel. Please watch and subscribe if you're interested. This video is going to cover some of the expected gains from moving your panels with uh, linear actuators and following the sun and some of the code to make that happen and then we'll cover a little bit of the build as well and there will be some follow-up videos after this. So we had permanently mounted panels on top of our art studio shed that's power has a mini split uh, AC unit and we're quite getting enough from the 1200 watts of uh, panels we have on there. We have uh, about 5 kilowatts of battery in it. So I've been toying with the idea of uh, using some sort of a uh, lift to uh, increase the output um, just to get to where we need to be, which wasn't really far. Um, but we do run out of battery sometime towards the end of the evening uh, a lot of times. So I wanted to try what I had originally used some actuators in our uh, tool shed. So and wanted to see if I could take a shot with those and see if I could put those to some sort of use on the studio shed. So my idea was to solidly mount the uh, linear actuator with an articulating bar that would lift the panel and to try to uh, uh, relieve stress from the hinges in the back of the panel. These are heavy panels, they weigh about 50 pounds plus. So I used uh, two uh, channel uh, or L pieces of steel that I uh, welded in the middle and then I mounted the actuator in there and then I've used some bearings with uh, plastic around them to ride inside the L-channel steel and then attach the edge of the panel then to the end of the articulated uh, piece of steel and you'll see how that, that works later and then I had to mount everything of course in the steel so that it's solid. Um, because these panels weigh so much you really have to mount them pretty securely uh, and they're not really made for this. So so originally I tried to mine it mounted uh, horizontally I guess uh, across the uh, front of the panel. You can, I think you can see the uh, hinges in the back and that worked okay for testing as you can see all the way up but at the very end of the travel when it comes down, it comes down pretty hard and it does put a lot of torque on the hinges. So ultimately I decided not to do it horizontally like this and decided to move to more of a vertical implementation. And you can see that next. So this is the vertical mount and it rides along the, the uh, tray there as you can see when it runs out, it's a 12 inch uh, actuator, it pushes that bar up and rides on those bearings uh, within that trough there. It's worked pretty well so far and I had an issue with the other side and that articulated bar there with the holes in it is 16 inches on the other side. I dropped that to 14 inches on this side which increases the angle that it actually starts at and that puts a lot less pressure on the hinges in the back. That's the LDR blocker there. Um, with the leads, the battery I was using to operate it, and this is how the one that's uh, currently working the best is uh, installed right now. And that one, like I said, is working well with the 14 inches instead of the 16 inches. This is the other side, and that one's a little bit longer, and you can see some deformation on the, uh, the hinge uh, mounts there. And those are the LDR leads there. And this is how it's running on that side. And this is what it looks like when they're evened out. That is midday after the morning it's moved up and it's pulling the full sun. And that's the uh, tool shed with its two 300 watt panels. And today's the first day I looked at the other side and this is going to give me probably another 20 to 30 percent of morning sun I think. And we'll be installing uh, those activators on that side in another video. And as far as the gains you expect, I have Epever, an Epever uh, 
charge controller, which uh, has a cloud function, which uh, tracks all of my previous three months data. So I was able to look at what it looks like with the panels up and the panels down. And I picked up about a 27.3% increase uh, from the morning hours to about noon. So I've been tracking that and that is going to be added to by the other side of the uh, shed also being lifted too. So I should get another, I think, 20 to 30 percent of morning sun from lifting the other side of the shed as well. You will read in most places that it doesn't make any financial sense to actually put these in. You, For what we spent on the actuators, the steel and the aluminum, we could have just bought another panel to increase our output. But I don't have any more room on the top of this shed to actually add panels. So that's the reason that I have for the most part, but I also wanted to just learn how to do this. So that's part of my reasoning behind that. I'm doing a, a lot of work on figuring out solar and how to optimize solar prior to hopefully moving to Central America at some point. But this is what it looks like in the afternoon when both panels are even more or less. And that is based on the LDR's readings and or will be once we uh, do the other side. And it's about $480 total for to do all four panels on this. So it's not super cost effective and it costs probably another $100 for the electronics, the Arduino, the motor driver, and uh, batteries and whatnot. So, Speaking of electronics, these are them. This is uh, Arduino Nano and the wiring that goes out to the LDRs. There's the LDR outs and the motor driver. I can drive two motors from this. Also, this is the final product. Uh, we're going to go to a Wi-Fi version of the Arduino Nano. So anyway, let's uh, cover the code. Um, and I'm going to do a whole separate video on the electronics and the code. Um, maybe two more videos. But I have uh, that's the code that, uh, based on the sun position, uh, it uh, extends or retracts the uh, uh, linear actuators. So I have extend, retract, those are my variables and sensor pins called out. Those are the LDR sensors that are sensing the light and they are broken up uh, by a, a light blocker. So one LDR is on one side of the blocker, one side is on the other. So one is getting shade throughout the day and the other one is getting more sun and as the sun is moving overhead that changes over time. So it's taking sensor readings from those LDRs. And you can see how I'm doing it is very simple. I could be doing some value averages and things like that, but I found that I just used a delay, uh, a threshold, which is set to 50 right now, and then a, which is 50 when the LDR sensors are more than 50 apart, then it moves it one way or the other. And it does some subtraction and to get that value. So if sensor value is greater than sensor value 2 plus the threshold of 50 then it extends or sorry extend turns to low and retract turns to high so it pulls it in and does that for two seconds else if sensor value is greater than sensor value 1 sensor value 2 sorry is greater than sensor value 1 plus the threshold then it sets retract to low and extend to high for two seconds so based on what, if it's one is higher than the other by a threshold of 50, then it moves it. And I found this actually works. So I'm probably going to stick with this simple, fairly simple code because it, it's doing what I want it to do. And there's a delay of 5,000 or 5 seconds at the end. That's 5,000 milliseconds. And then, of course, the loop uh, starts over again. We're reading the sensors again. And that uh, I found that it works well. And... How I got this and to test this, you can go to uh, the NOAA site and how I found it was working correctly. You can get your city and it'll tell you what your solar elevation is and say at 135, take a look, the solar position is at solar elevation of 80.31. So you go to the next minute, it's 1336, still going up, 1337, it's starting to go down. So at 1337, plus my threshold of 50, it has to go 50 past, uh, 50 points past, and that's not 50 minutes or anything like that, it's just the uh, what the actual sensor value was. 
and my sensor value at zero is 300 and then it goes up higher from there and now when it calculates the solar position going the other way then it will start retracting so if you want to change your solar installation from a static installation like this one to something that produces a bit more maybe not a lot more that changes throughout the day then keep watching my videos and please like the video and subscribe if this is the kind of content you like to continue seeing. Thanks. Racing Green out.